Good morning, everybody. My name is Eta Garlaski. I work for Green Chemicals. Uh, we are based in Italy and we are uh, focused on flame retardant solutions. Normally, uh, we dedicate our attention to the styrenics world and the polyurethane. I'm here today to introduce some new approach in flame uh, retardancy and uh, to let you understand that even a small company can find solutions so we can be positive and uh, think that we can find solution to the inputs the market is receiving. Uh, in this moment, styrenics, even polyurethane, is under pressure because they are plastics and you know that in Europe the circular economy became very, very important. So it's very important in this moment that all the companies involved in the world of plastic can demonstrate that we can give green solutions in the direction of uh, recyclable materials. Today we will be talking about flame retardant mechanism. This is just to introduce this mechanism and let you understand how we can be effective in the flame retardancy. We will talk about the normal flame retardants using XPS and DPU and this new approach of reactive additives. We will talk about the advantages and disadvantages of this new solution and we will give some specific cases in polyurethane and in the sterics. We will talk about uh, what we could get in uh, the direction of uh, new materials that will use new blowing agents. And uh, of course we will talk about the difficulties in uh, recycling the styrenics and uh, what we can do to improve the recyclability. And then we will uh, just close everything. Combustion. Um, maybe somebody of you already know what the combustion is, but why not to resume? Uh, this uh, fantastic reaction. We have to remember it's a chemical reaction, it's an oxidation chemical reaction. It means that there will be the generation of very, very reactive radicals. The, um, the reaction itself involves the creation of heat, the development of flames, and also some smoke and gas. You should remember that the combustion is made of, it's a process and it is made of steps. The material uh, will start heating once that you gave some energy. Then the material will start decomposing. And only after a while, after this energy raises up, you will start emission itself of material. Material will start combustion and decomposing until the, um, the flame will uh, propagate so much that it will be impossible to stop everything. The message is that all flame retardant need to be effective in the first steps of combustion. <laughs> Materials are different, polymers are different, because they are chemically different. This means that there will be materials that are more resistant to fire and some materials that uh, are not, unfortunately. We are talking always about organic materials, they will be always subject to this kind of reactions. The um, limit oxygen index is a very interesting information that gives you the idea of how material can react. Here you can see in the table that polyolefins like polypropylene but also polystyrene are easily flammable because you only need a very small percentage of oxygen and the material will start burning. On the other side, if we talk about PVC that in fact contains some chlorine, or even Teflon, these are very resistant material. You will need a content of oxygen in the air that is not reachable, so finally they are very resistant material. If materials are different, also the mechanism will be different. I will just give you an idea of the mechanisms that are used in all plastics, and then I will let you understand what is used in styrenics and polyurethane. Water development mechanism, this is very old mechanism, it is widely used, if I'm not wrong, I have not the data, but I believe that half of the plastic um, world is still based on the application of these materials. They act in a physical mechanism in the condensed phase and the gas phase with three actions. They cool down the, the temperature, they dilute the oxygen that is present, and they decrease the energy. Um, the problem of this material, of this solution, is that you, read, you need a very high dosage. We are talking about 40 or 60%. So you only can put this 
specific materials when you don't need any mechanical properties. The main application is still uh, pipes, for example. So we cannot use this mechanism in our uh, condition. The widely used flame retardant mechanism uh, applied all over plastic is the one that involves halogen. Why halogenated materials are so effective? Because they are effective in the gas phase. And uh, one other point, if you look at the, uh, at the products that contain a bromine, that are the one mo mostly used in this application, you will discover that these are molecules containing very high percentage of bromine. Actually, they can reach until 80%. So you can understand that the result will be a very interesting dosage. What happens? If you remember what I described before in combustion, uh, you should remember that you have the generation of very reactive radicals in combustion. In fact, if you look at the picture, you see that when you have fire, when you have combustion, you have the presence of oxygen, hydrogen, hydroxyl radicals, and these will attack everything, okay? Once that you put halogenated materials, you start uh, creating new reactions that will generate bromine radicals. These radicals have lower energy. So first step, you are decreasing the energy involved in the, all this process. And you are in somehow poisoning uh, the air surrounding the, the material. What was understood in years of use of these materials is that you can put a very interesting material uh, antimony trioxide that acts as effective synergist of ruminated molecules. Once that you put in material, in plastic, a ruminated molecule together with its synergist, you can see in the right part of the slide that the radicals are completely decreased. This is why these, uh, these solutions are so, so effective. Mm, usually when we talk about halogen-free solutions, and uh, we talk about it a lot recently, um, we are mainly focused on the mechanism I will be talking about later, that are the char mechanism, the intumescent mechanism, because everybody started with these materials. But it's important to remember that we can get halogen-free um, mm, solutions that are effective also in the, the gas phase. This is very important. What we understood, and you can find data in the literature, is that you should divide the molecules containing phosphorus. You have a very wide range. You can have phosphinate, phosphates, and we understood that actually red phosphorus and the phosphinate act in the gas phase. They are very effective and can be used in some applications and on the other side, you have the phosphate materials that can be used in uh, the formation of intumescent systems. What are the problems of phosphate-based material? Everybody wants them, it's true. But the problem is that in nature, you will find, in nature I mean ones that you synthesize molecules, you only can find the material containing up to 20, maybe 23% of phosphorus. So just compare. Halogenated molecules contain up to 80%, phosphorus-based contain up to 20 This means that solutions will be possible. Everybody's working on them, and in the next years we will uh, uh, provide new solutions. But we need to understand that for sure the, the dosage may be higher, and the cost will be higher as well, because these are all new molecules developing. So we could talk about uh, widespread used uh, allotted free materials maybe in 10 years, I can imagine. Uh, and at that time, the conditions will change. But if we talk about the next two years, I'm sure that some good solutions will be present in the market. You have to understand that there are some limits. The charm mechanism I've been talking about is uh, destined to the materials only specific polymers that contain in their chain oxygen, um, nitrogen, it can work only with heteroatoms present. The interesting thing of this material is that it doesn't work in the gas phase, but more in the polymer surface, by creating a layer, a thick layer that will create a barrier between the material itself and the combustion area. 
when we talk about polyolefins, so no heteroatoms are present, only carbon and uh, hydrogen, the intumescent uh, mechanism is necessary because the formation of this char layer is not enough. Why? It will, the material itself will be able to create this layer, but the thickness will not be enough to be effective. So we need absolutely not only to put inside the system a cheering agent, a phosphorus-based material, but we need to add also nitrogen-based foaming agent. In this case, the material will blow and the thickness, the resulting thickness, will be enough to be effective. This is how the intumescent uh, works. This is the last mechanism I would like to talk with you. This is very effective with some specific materials, actually some polypropylene, and some uh, polystyrene, and uh, sometimes also some polyamide. Um, it is very different condition in this case, this mechanism is effective only with not severe test. So uh, it is very used in foaming, because in foaming uh, you only have to demonstrate that the material finally doesn't burn. But uh, what you put inside is a molecule that will attack the polymer. You put something that will create radicals, and these radicals will cut the chain. What you observe in this case is the dripping of material. So we we create the gradation of uh, material to pass the test. This is uh, the actual situation. We have a lot of molecules that are used in plastics. Our idea um, is to have a new approach, is to look at allergen-free solutions that maybe have a, a different aspect. They are reactive. Reactive molecules can be used to link, to be linked together with the polymer. This creates completely new materials and opens, really opens uh, a panorama of possibilities. Let's see what are the advantages and disadvantages of this technology. First, why we decided to study these reactive flame retardants? If we are able to link together the material, the flame retardant and the polymer, the result will be a stronger polymer that will not have migration effects. You are not putting inside some additives. No, you are linking material. What we understood is that the final effects of this material, um, they are more efficient than additives themselves. You have better dispersion, the material is strongly linked, you don't have migration in the moment of production and after years. And these are, of course, the, um, the advantages. The disadvantages is that you have not the same flexibility you could have in putting <coughs> additives. Today you have a lot of additives that can be used, but you have a very small range of effective reactive flame retardants. So you have uh, to, to find them, to choose them. Uh, not all these materials work, of course. No, you maybe would like to put more flame retardants to be effective, but there are some limits because you have to put them in polymerization step. You can put um, not only in polymerization, you can also have some uh, extruding reactive reaction, um, but you have some limits because you have chemical reactions anyway. You are not only putting additives, and if you put something more, nothing happens. No, you have to respect the chemistry in this case. Some concrete cases. We started developing some ideas um, uh, that we applied to the styrenics world and to the rigid polyurethane foams. Let's remember that it's quite difficult to, to, to give flavor thermosy to polystyrene because the limited oxygen <coughs> index is very low, so they are very flammable. But in the foams, actually, um, the tests are uh, commonly used uh, in Europe are the Euroclass E, and it's not so much severe test. So the mechanisms that we choose for the ceramics are the gas phase and the dripping. We use these two mechanisms to be efficient. What we could, uh, could get is a material that is linked together and it gives functionality to, to this polystyrene and this gives a lower migration, um, green 
aspect because finally it's a halogen free solution it's uh, linked together with the material so we go into the direction of green materials on the other side for the polyurethane also in this case we worked with the mechanisms that are commonly used for uh, flame retardancy in this, case, in this case char and gas phase and we could create a new polyol and the polyol uh, has a flame retardant linked together. Let's start with the polyurethane. We created uh, two materials. In one case, it's pure. It's only a modified polyol, polyester-based, with a flame retardant inside the chain. And we can create this alone, or we can create this together with other, uh, other additives, other sandwiches. The idea is that we could replace one by one the actual solutions. Now, what was the input from the market? In uh, polyurethane, the widely used material is TCPP. Everybody loves TCPP. The dosage is, uh, is good enough and it's so, com it's so interesting because uh, it's uh, completely cheap, but it contains chlorine. And uh, we've been talking about uh, the banning of uh, TCPP for maybe 20 years. Um, we didn't move um, towards new direction, but the pressure exists. Our idea was to give to the market some completely new material that is completely allergen free. So this material substitutes um, the, the actual solution. It gives no migration, no migration at all. The material is very well dispersed. Uh, the, the, the result is very homogeneous material. Just to talk about some concrete cases, we started, we cooperated with a company who makes uh, polyurethane. They uh, let us compare um, what is their reference product and other two application and they substitute the TCPP used usually between 10 and 20 percent with our solution, the new modified polyol flame retardant. What is quite interesting is that the other formula, the other additives put in the formulation were not changed, so we are not modifying so much the material and we are anyway giving the desired flame retardant uh, effect. In all three cases we could get B2. Mm, I would like to let you understand that when you play with the reactive flame retardants, you can do uh, as much as possible, as much as the chemistry uh, allows. We could put even more flame retardant inside the polyol. The problem is viscosity. So in one side, uh, of course, we would like to <coughs> lower the dosage of the material, the final material. But, uh, and we could get until uh, we could put 50% of flame retardant into the polyol. But the problem is that the viscosity rises so much that finally it cannot be used anymore in polyurethane. Our intention in uh, our development is to go on putting in the reaction more and more flame retardant and to eliminate any traces of polyol and glycol, this is the problem, uh, to have also a solution for uh, polyester foam. So really, the possibilities are wide and I believe that a lot of companies are working on this new approach. With this, I explained uh, our results in polyurethanes and now I would like to speak also about the sterilics. At the same time, we decided to, to follow this new approach to work with the reactive additives to give functionality to our material and we decided to give reply to two inputs that came from the market. First, in uh, the production of XPS, the blowing agent that is commonly used is a uh, 152A. This material is uh, in the group of the HFC materials. Um, maybe not all of you know it, but uh, there is a lot of pressure by Europe to mm, lower, decrease the amount of HFC in the market. It started with, the, for example, the gas that we used in the refrigerating systems of the cars. And now we are talking also about other applications. 
In the past, quite old plants used 152A as blowing agent because there is no other way to produce so easily XPS spores. It gives a lot of expansion, you can reach very high thicknesses. Today, I would say half of the plants in Europe stopped using 152A and they are making tests in, with new blowing agents. Um, Honeywell proposed a new material named HFO. The problem nowadays is that the cost is three times, let's say, uh, the, the current uh, gas used in other, in other uh, plants. So everybody makes trials with new blowing agents, everybody is interested to find out very good lambda, so very good characteristics of the, the panel. How can we, can we manage this? Some of these customers decided to use some new blowing agents uh, like isobutane. This is very, very effective because it gives a wonderful lambda. The material uh, nature, um, the, the molecule itself is so big that it will remain longer and longer inside the board, so the, the insulation effect is higher. But the isobutane has a problem. It is flammable, much more flammable than the other gases used. So, uh, one problem came from the market, and we, as other competitors, of course, decided to promote solutions. What we found interesting is that this reactive technology we decided to follow could help us finding out materials that be effective, that would be effective also with flammable gases. This is one case. One other input is the necessity of green solutions. In uh, 2015, the mostly used molecule in the styrenics, HBCD, was bad. We found out solutions that still contain bromine. Uh, no, everybody used, and of course, we need to find out also some uh, allogen free solutions. When you talk about reactive materials, you can go in this direction. This is the message that I would like to, to let you know. So in the, in the recent uh, months, we developed something, and in the next years, something halogen-free will be available in the market for your information. What we understood, another problem that uh, these customers uh, raised, is the necessity to have recycled material, because we are obliged to be involved in the circular economy. If you can work on a lot of aspects, you can work also on the flame retardant packages. What we understood in XPS is that though, um, there is a wide range of uh, solutions. You can use polymeric flame retardants, monomeric flame retardants. Every solution has its own characteristics. You have solutions that are effective because they are very, very uh, used at lower the dosage, but you have also some materials that are thermal stable. You can play with it. You can give to the customer solutions that go in uh, one direction or another. And, other than the characteristics of material, you can play with the stabilization package. You have only to remember that the more you stabilize, uh, the more you lose activity. For an example, here you have monomeric solution. We put in the oven for four hours and in the right of the picture you can see the result. This is the polymeric. You can understand that the behavior is very different. This is a third molecule. In this case, you have the most thermal stable material, but the deficiency is the lowest. So remember only that you have different effects, and all the suppliers will always play with these two solutions. We can play, as I told you, with the thermal stabilization package. In fact, if you look at the right below in the, in the slide, you can see that the material was put in the oven for four hours at 200 degrees and uh, compared to the other materials, the other pictures, you just noticed there is actually no degradation. Why this information is important? You can use your own scrap many times. You can use recycled material and you will not observe degradation of it. Let's just focus and conclude this, uh, what we noticed about uh, recycling. 
Everybody knows uh, the problem of uh, handling foams and uh, you need to compact these materials, you have to regulate this material, but the, the real important aspect is that when uh, the XPS producers use, again, material, they can face some degradation problems. What we understood is that first you need to thermostabilize solutions. So all the materials given for XPS should be more thermostabilized. Second, in the EPS production, in case you put some flame retardant, it will react with peroxide and it will degradate polystyrene, so it will not be used for recycling. In this case, you should choose some more stable materials. And on the other side, you should choose some additional thermal stabilization package. One last thing, you also can deactivate the peroxide. This also can help. And one problem that was uh, put into our attention recently, a lot of old material uh, that need to be recycled contains HPCD, the molecule that was banned in 2015. What should we do with this material? The message is everybody's working on finding out additives that can deactivate HPCD. And we are in a, in a good point. Uh, for more <coughs> information, we are really close to have solution also for this. Just focus on the picture we have in the right. If you extrude material with a bad condition, you don't have stabilization, you uh, maybe have some HBC inside, you get brownish material. But if you are able to stabilize material and uh, we put inside, in this case, one additive <coughs> that will deactivate HPCD, we could get white material. We are still studying it. We are still developing it and uh, making analysis. But this is the first visual effect that we could obtain. So, allogen-free solutions exist. Light phosphorus is uh, the, the area we are uh, st studying that can be applied in uh, styrenics and polyurethane. And thanks to this uh, new approach, these new green solutions, we also can have uh, more recyclable materials. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much indeed, uh, Ethel, for a very interesting uh, and very in-depth uh, presentation uh, about your uh, new greener uh, fire retardants. Uh, very, very interesting indeed. Thank you. So we have a number of uh, questions that have already come in. Uh, the first one is, uh, can you confirm that your flame retardant for polystyrene is a reactive flame retardant? It is, uh, in the XPS, we use always a muscle batch. A muscle batch is a formulation including a part of flame retardant, cyanide stabilization. So yes, it includes something that was obtained by reactive. Okay. Um, again, anonymous. Uh, for uh, PU, you checked rise time and attack free times. I think the question is, did you check rise time and attack free time for polyurethane? Not yet. Uh, did you check cell structure, whether or not it was closed or open cells? Mm, no. Uh, let's say that these characteristics are uh, usually made, um, these analyses are made by our customers. We can make the flame retardant test. Okay. Um, specifically, uh, Anonymous, again, but very busy today, uh, asks uh, for uh, polyurethane pumps, you need a viscosity of 2000 CPS or less. Can you reduce your viscosity somehow? Um, of course, let's say that uh, in polyurethane the problem, the main problem is the viscosity and actually the introduction of some TEP will help the, um, the viscosity to reduce and the material also to work because the TEP, that is another molecule, will act as a synergist. Act as a? A synergist. So it will have flame retardancy and the underside, it will also decrease the viscosity. So it, if you have problems with the viscosity, uh, it's a common used uh, solution. Nowadays also, when you use TCPP, you put some TEP inside to control the viscosity. So the same you can do also with the new material. Okay. Uh, Anonymous again asks, your GC Pol 55 retardant, is it polymeric or ol oligomeric? Po sorry, polymeric. Poly the name polymeric, uh, uh, the name Pol includes the polymeric and the other grades are combinations of more materials. Okay, Anonymous once again asks, 
And what are the chemical products or emissions when the flame retardant is exposed to high temperatures? Um, the point is that on one side you have some specific characteristics of materials. This you cannot change. And if you look at the data, you just have to find the literature, you can find that uh, there are three uh, solutions used in the oldest ceramics. You have the polymeric solution, and you can uh, just find the TDS <coughs> and find out what is the thermal resistance. You have other two molecules that are VDTP, common name, and uh, uh, what is the SR130. So you have other two monomeric solutions. You can look at the TDS. What you can discover is that if I'm not wrong, the polymeric solution uh, should be stable until uh, 2030 degrees, something like this. Uh, let's say slightly lower than HPCD, and it requires some higher stabilization. So it can be used with no problems, but you have to stabilize. The monomeric are always more thermostabilized. And if you look at the, the data, I believe, I believe that they are stable at 300 degrees, so much higher. Okay, and the, the final, very obvious question is, how, does, uh, how do your new formulations um, compare in price? Well, um, if you just talk about stabilization package, you are not talking about, uh, it will not be so much effective. Uh, we are talking about only 20 cents difference, so it's something that the market can absorb. If we talk about uh, the solutions that were provided for uh, the new blowing agent, in this case, if you have to be active in the gas phase with a flammable gas, you will need higher dosage, and for sure the price will be higher. This is uh, something that you cannot change. And if you talk about green solution, also in this case it should be higher because you will never find something that be that would be uh, dosed at the same conditions we are using now bromine materials. So the problem mainly is the dosage. Okay. Are there any questions from the real world? Okay. Uh, Ethel, uh, you've uh, withstood a barrage of questions there and uh, answered them very, very well indeed. So uh, let's give Ethel another fantastic round of applause. Thank you.